She helped me when I had just started. I mean, as a friend, she helped me. And as an agent, she helped me. And she was extremely intelligent. And um, she was this great person to have in my life on a business level, as well as feeling uh, personal feelings towards her. She was just a tremendous woman. And her death must have been a terrible loss to you. Yes, it, 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 it was a terrible loss to me. There have only been a select few models who have truly changed the game and has captivated the fashion world the way Gia Karanji had. An undeniably stunning beauty with a look and an edge that influenced generations long after her. More than just a cautionary tale, the story of Gia Karanji will always be a story worth telling. Gia Marie Karanji was born January 29, 1960, to parents Kathleen and Joseph. Her childhood was troubled to say the least, as her parents' tumultuous marriage ended when Gia was still very young, leaving Gia in dysfunction and without a mother. But she had a magnetic presence with her peers, finding herself surrounded by adoring teenage girls who were influenced by the legendary David Bowie drawn to his defiant flamboyant androgynous style. It was this sort of bold self-expression that allowed her to be discovered by makeup artist Sandra Skirka, who was taken aback after seeing photos of Gia that were shown to her by hairdresser Maurice Tannenbaum. And just a few days later, Gia was in the offices of Wilhelmina Cooper and would sign with Wilhelmina Models in 1978, at age 17. Gia's career took off at light speed after her very first photo shoot with photographer Chris von Wangenheim, where she posed nude alongside makeup artist Sandy Linter, and shortly thereafter became the hottest model in the industry. She would land the cover of Italian Vogue in the spring of 1979. That was followed by British Vogue, Paris Vogue, and American Vogue, all within the span of one year. She also appeared in campaigns for brands the likes of Versace, Armani, Yves Saint Laurent, and Christian Dior. She was a master of angles and perhaps the most photogenic of all models. Gia had said of her rapid rise to fame that she wasn't built into a model, she just became one. But with her massive fame came a lifestyle of excessive partying and substance abuse. A regular on the downtown New York club scene, Gia was becoming known for indulging in hard drugs in full view of the watching public. It is said that her addiction spiraled totally out of control after the death of her agent and close friend Wilhelmina Cooper, who died of lung cancer in March of 1980. It wouldn't be long before Gia would become a full-on heroin addict, who the industry would gradually start pulling away from, as she was known for her raging fits and storming out of photo shoots. She would eventually leave Wilhelmina and sign with Ford Models in November of 1980, but her time there would be short-lived, and she would be left to her own vices. And after a run-in with police where she was under the influence of alcohol, she would sign with a little-known upstart agency called Legends, and would book sporadic jobs, mostly abroad. She would later sign with Elite Model Management in 1981 with hopes of reviving her career but the damage had already been done, with most photographers and brands refusing to work with her. Gia would soon find herself lonely and destitute in Philadelphia and Atlantic City, and would check herself into a rehab program, trying her best to walk the straight and narrow. But by 1985, she was back on hard drugs, and engaging in sex work to earn money. It was during this time, she would contract the AIDS virus, which would ultimately take her life in November of 1986, at just 26 years of age. Gia was a lovely, yet troubled soul, with mind-blowing talent, who left the world far too soon. 
No, but it is pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's life in the big city and uh, beautiful. <laughs>